Hello everyone and welcome to another Bass Singer first time reaction and analysis. For those who don't know me, my name is Peter Barber. I am a professional opera singer, music producer, and bass vocalist. For the last year or so, I've been making these reaction and analysis videos, both giving a reaction as you're used to, and second, well actually primarily, I am doing musical analysis of what's happening. So vocal technique, the arrangement, instrumentation, Sometimes the videography, if I'm feeling spicy, um, but I, 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 I basically try to give insight about what's happening musically to help you all enjoy the music more and appreciate more aspects about all these incredibly talented artists that I make videos for. So that's that. Guys, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please leave a comment for the algorithm. And if I'm enhancing your listening experience, if you're gaining value from these videos, please consider joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And there are amazing benefits going up higher and higher on the tier ladder um, until you get all the way to the top where there's some really cool stuff. So go check that out. Guys, it's been a while since I've done pentatonics. It's been a minute. You all have been requesting it. You've been requesting this one, probably the longest of all. Um, I know as a reactor, I'm probably most well known for my videos I've done on pentatonics. So it's about time we get back to them. They're kind of like the OG, like really superstar acapella group. You know, almost 20 million subscriptions on YouTube. Really world famous, billions of views total. I mean, a, a truly remarkable group, and they really helped popularize acapella as a genre, which I am thankful for being in that world. Um, that's that. Let's get into it. I have never seen this video. Uh, I am familiar with New Rules by Dua Lipa, right? And Are You That Somebody? Not sure who that's by, but I've heard it for sure. Um, so let's see what they do with this mashup. Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. How crisp. Oh, it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better than when you've got a good bass and a good vocal percussionist on the same page. Yeah, down to a C sharp too there for our boy Matt and Kevin coming in with just the most crisp perk on the planet. Apparently, um, they used to call Avi and Kevin the meat and potatoes of the group. Now Matt has assumed Avi's position and what an incredible job he's done filling unfillable shoes. Um, but hope, let's just listen to this intro again. We've got a nice bass line from Matt and we've got super crisp perk coming in from Kevin, and it's just, it is the meat and potatoes. It's just money. Talking in my sleep at night, making myself crazy. God, it's just like, <laughs> It's like every new element that comes in, you're like, holy shit, this is really good. Wow, that's incredible. Wow, that's even better. So we've got, and then, so then we've got Scott coming in on these vocals, and Scott's one of one of the great pop vocalists of our time. Same with Mitch, same with Kirsty. They're all just incredibly good. Um, so we've got Scott coming in on the solo, and then we've got Kirsty and Mitch taking over these kind of echoing background harmonies. Yes. Also, I love they're shooting this in like some soup, probably like a thirty million dollar New York. I think New York high rise apartment, probably rented, but. Just a really nice, elegant setting for this video. Um, let's just let's check out those background harmonies. Oh, 
One, two. Uh, one, two. Mm. I love how they start soft and then crescendo into it a little bit. I love what they did there. So that first time. They were just doing it on vowels, like an ah vowel. And then the second time they reiterated that background harmony, they actually put words in and they used words from the solo line. Check that out. Just listen to the contrast between those two. And it would save me too many times, too many times. My love, it makes me feel like nobody else, nobody else. Now words. And so I tell myself, I tell myself, I tell myself. Super creative. Creates contrast, makes it different. They could have done the same thing and it still would have been good, but they put lyrics in and changed it up, which made it great. To pick up the phone, you know he's only coming because he's drunk and alone. Two, don't let him in, you'll have to kick him out again. Three, don't be his friend, you know you're gonna wake up in his bed in the morning. And if you're under him, you ain't getting over him. I got no rules again. So good, it's so crisp. So, like, they're obviously super crazy talented. They got a beautiful video, and the sound engineers putting these songs together make it sound so so tight and and professional and clear which is what you'd expect from a superstar group like this but it just the sound never gets old it's just such high quality it's so well put together and it's fantastic i actually haven't even listened to pentatonics in a while because i'm like in this world i'm singing opera i'm making my own content i'm doing stuff with the bass gang i just need to go back and like binge all their stuff because it's kind of gotten away from me how great they are. Again, three, don't be his friend. You know you're gonna wake up in his bed in the morning. And if you're under him, you ain't getting over him. I got no rules again. I got no rules again. Are you that somebody? There it is. That somebody. I love that. What are we even in right now? F sharp minor. So that's a. Right, that's just a five, three, one in F sharp minor. But what they're doing is, I think Mitch comes in first, sustains it, and they add another one. And then by the end, they're together creating this minor third, this minor, tri sorry, this minor triad. It's quick, but there is some sustain there. Oh, that one's even faster. There's another little contrast. So the first one was dum dum dum. The second one was dum dum dum. Just another little interesting change in the arrangement. Those are the kinds of things that when they perform this live is so tough to memorize. It's really tough to memorize syllables that are not words because they just don't stick in our brain. It's a little bit like gibberish and it's tough to memorize tiny variations. Um, I just did a cover which will be coming out soon when this video comes out of the Game of Thrones theme song. <clears throat> and the way I did it, Marwan Amon's editing it and it's all syllables. I didn't put any words in there because it's an instrumental piece. And Marwan wanted me to record all the parts at once for each angle of the video. So I could pretty much had to memorize the whole arrangement. It took me so long to be able to memorize the tiny variations in rhythms and syllables because they just don't stick in the brain very well. Not like lyrics, not like, you know, a really catchy melody. So Little variations like that make live performance much more difficult. Now, of course, they're professionals. They memorize their music. They crush it in live performance. But I want to just give them credit. And so you guys know, little variations like that 
in a chorus that repeats three times with tiny differences is very, it's one of the hardest things to memorize. So good for them. Also, I keep checking my Fitbit. As you guys know, I like to keep these videos, if I can, under half an hour. That I found talking with my patrons and my audience and just what I'm able to do from an editing standpoint, putting everything together, is kind of the magic window where the people who want to hear the analysis are down to stick around for 30 minutes. Um, some people would want more, but most people, that's kind of like the limit. So that's what we're doing. So if you see me checking my Fitbit, I'm definitely not bored. I'm just making sure I'm not running out of camera time. On we go. Who's that counting? Are you that somebody? Oh, I've got a talent to myself. I keep pushing forwards, but he keeps pulling me backwards. I love that. I love the break in the arrangement where it just is Scott's solo for a second. Everything else cuts out and then everything else comes back in. I know who's that counting? Are you that somebody? Pushing forwards, but he keeps pulling me backwards. Now I'm standing back to me. I finally see the past. So all the background parts are still going back and forth. It's more active now. You can hear it's all more active now than where we started. But the background parts, which it sounds to me predominantly in this piece so far, is Mitch and Kirsty. They're they're quickly going back and forth between just singing on vowels, oohs, ahs, ees, whatever works, whatever fits the part, to uh, singing the text that Scott is singing, but usually afterwards as like an echo and usually in a different rhythm. I keep pushing forwards, but he keeps pulling me backwards. Now, I don't know the original songs that well, but I think the second verse is, I think there are aspects of both, like rhythmic choices that the original artists use, text from each song. You guys can let me know in the comments, because again, I know that I know the original songs, but not super well, not enough to figure out every tiny detail that Pentatonix decided to use from each respective song. But I would guess because they had a bit of that going on in the first chorus. It's a cool thing in acapella music that does happen relatively often where you introduce the second song of a mashup in the chorus and then the middle section of the song is almost like a pure blend of the two. So y'all can fact check. That's just, I'm just guessing there's a bit of each element going on here. So I was just about to comment. The bass line and the percussion have stayed very similar. Like that bass line and then Kevin's... Whatever he's doing. He's been doing that pretty much the whole time. But we just had a little bit variation here where... Just listen. The bass line and the perk just changes some. We have minor variations. But here, listen to this. So I think that was pretty similar to the first chorus, but I'm guessing it's a little more active, and I'm guessing that the text and vowels that Kirsty and Mitch were doing were a little different, just to kind of add development to the song. You know, like I said, hard to memorize, but worth it because it keeps it more interesting than just copy paste. Um, but yeah, then back back to the similar bass line and perk for the second chorus. In the morning, and if you're under him, you ain't getting over him. I got no rules I count. I got no rules I count. Are you that somebody? So 
that's all very that was all very much similar to the first course there. Um, not a whole lot to comment on differently than I already said in the first bit. So let's back it up so we can get this transition and keep moving. Are you responsible? Oh, that mm -hmm. That's good. I like that the Matt guy because he's pretty much been sticking to the like I said that similar bass on the whole time. I'm glad they threw him a little a little bass cameo um, there. And I mean the guy also has. I mean he can he can sing very well up into baritone and even tenor range in his chest voice. So it's I always like seeing when the bases of a musical group like this get get it get a spotlight aside from just being the baseline, which we all love so much and like that can be enough of a spotlight, but it's cool to see it's cool to hear the bass singer sing the melody. Nobody like you responsible. Boy, I got to watch my back cuz I'm not just anybody. There's a difference. That's nice. I like this. That's a really cool. Again, you got to have the perk and the bass on the same page. It makes a huge difference. It makes everything hit harder. And it like it's a stronger choice when everything really connects. When a kick drum hits with a bass vocal, it's absolute money. It sounds so good. Almost like a little dubstep drop there. Anyone that knows me well knows how much I love dubstep, y'all. Stay tuned for some upcoming projects. I was an EDM producer for a long time, uh, kind of before I went into opera, believe it or not. Um, so any kind of like dubstep drop, any kind of like special growly kind of stuff, heavy hitting drums, it's like, mm, yes, more. In the morning, if you want to hear so good i love the huge i love the huge belting harmonies we're getting from yeah kirsty and mitch <clears throat> maybe scott too in this last bit yeah all three of them oh look at that riff from scott Tiny break there, super cool. Really tiny break in <clears throat> in action. So they can bring it out, bring it back in. Mm. Yeah, and they were they were blending. They were doing like a full blend of the two songs at the end there, so. <clears throat> I think Scott was doing rules. Kirsty and Mitch were doing Are You That Somebody? And then Matt, obviously no text, no lyrics. Kevin, no lyrics. Um, it's amazing what they can accomplish with just five voices. And it's not like five voices multi-tracked. Like for the bass gang, four voices. But there might be 20 or 30 voices in a recording happening at the same time because we multi-track like crazy. Um, 
this is just five because they have to write arrangements that they can perform live, you know, on the road. And they don't do much backtracking in their live performances. They really only write what they can perform, which is really cool. Um, it's less of a thing nowadays. There's so much virtual content. Um, there's so many groups that work predominantly in the virtual sphere now. So you can do stuff like the multi-tracking because you don't have to worry about performing it live. And it's a kind of different... Uh, it's a it's a different kind of art in a way. Like these arrangements are super creative, but much more simple. And the fact that you only have to write for five voices, <clears throat> really four voices, because Kevin's probably going to make up his own beatboxing. Um, but it's just a different art form. What they were doing here with five people, the arrangements that voice play do, voice play does, home free, kind of the big three, five singers. Um, it's a little different than what some of these newer groups are doing with the multi-tracking. Um, guys, this is so fun. It had been so long since I had done a breakdown for pentatonics and just grooving, just like grooving and loving every second of it. And I mean, right from the get go, it's just like, yep, this is so professional. It's so well done. Every one of the groups sounds phenomenal. The audio engineering is great. The video editing is great. They just don't miss. Pentatonics just doesn't miss. I miss them, and I'm going to go back and listen to more of their stuff because it's been too long. For all the people requesting this, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you watched. Um, I will be sure to do more Pentatonics in the future. As you all know, I pretty much stick to one video a week because while I'm a professional opera singer and making my own content, I do not have the time to be making... I mean, I barely have the time to make one a week, but I do it because uh, I'm passionate about it and I get a lot of support on Patreon you guys love it and it's been great for me it was a great it was a great thing for me to start doing during the pandemic and i want to keep it up but it's pretty much going to be one video a week unless my life radically changes uh one way or the other so that's it guys i hope you enjoyed please like the video please subscribe to the channel leave a comment for the algorithm and go check out my patreon if you felt like i helped you enjoy this music more if, if i pointed out things you never heard before definitely one dollar a month to support me as a young artist, a young singer, a young performer, a young producer, all that stuff would greatly appreciate it. And with that, I will uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.